Welcome back to the channel everyone. My name's Blake and I've been riding bikes since around July 2022. Coming up on two years now. And in that time I can definitely say I've picked up quite a lot in regards to mountain biking. So I'm keen to start sharing some tips with everyone so less confident riders can start upping their game and being more confident on the trails. Let's get into it. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to corner faster on berms and flat corners. This is a really really good skill because if you can get more speed through the corner, obviously you have to brake less coming into it and you have to pedal less on the way out to get back up to speed. So therefore you'll be less tired and you'll just be able to carry a lot more speed and be a lot smoother out on the trails. So this is the berm we'll be learning on today. We're out here at Shenanigans at Mount Cotton. As you can see, we've got a bit of a drop coming into this corner. And as you come a bit further down, it gets pretty chunky here with some braking bumps just here. So um, yeah, it's a good cor corner to learn on because it's not just a perfect berm. Um, it's got some other stuff that requires some attention, which I'm going to also help out with. Step one of cornering faster is to throw out your Maxxis tires and go grab some of these bad boys, the Michelin Wild Enduros. I'm only sort of just kidding, but they are a very good tire and I highly recommend them. So my first proper tip for you guys is line selection. So what I usually like to do, this here is obviously a left hand berm. So I usually like to enter high on the berm. So with this berm, it would be on the right hand side. And if it was a right hand corner, you would enter on the left side. Reason that is, is because if you enter on the left side, you have to go through all the loose stuff and then corner real sharply, which is good for doing some fat cutties, Sam Pilgrim style. But if you want to take more, me more momentum through the corner, it's always a lot better to enter wide so you can get a nice arc. What that arc will allow you to do is not have to corner as tight Therefore, you'll be able to carry a lot more momentum. So obviously, you don't want to stay hot too high throughout the berm here. So once you get to around this point, you can see the top of the berm is all crumbly. So that's usually when you want to drop and aim for the middle, right through the spot where it's not loose. So obviously, if you look down here, there's all loose rock. And if you look at the top, it's all crumbly. So you want to stay away from that stuff and basically just take a nice wide arc through the corner. In regards to line choice, you want to try and pick your exit and spot it as soon as you can. So ideally you want to do it at the very top of the berm up here, but there's a lot of trees in the way and this is a pretty long corner. So basically as you come down here, you'll notice that you can spot your exit around here. So while you're coming down this bit, you want to turn your head to the side, spot your exit, and that way you can pick a nice line towards it. In regards to positioning on the bike, what you want to do, coming into the corner, you want to be in a nice attack position. So if you're not sure what that is, basically you'll be standing up, lean forward with your chest down, and keep your elbows nice and bent. That way you can lean your bike over nice and easily with your bent elbows by basically pivoting at the elbows to lean the bike over. Also, leaning forward will allow you to keep most of your weight on your front wheel, which your front wheel is where you want most of your grip to be. So if you're putting your weight over it, the tire will hook up more. So you really got to put the trust in them tires, lean forward, put your weight into the tire and that will allow you to stop the front wheel slip outs. And if anything, your rear wheel might slide a bit if you're too far forwards, but would you rather have your front wheel slip out in the middle of a berm, or would you rather have your rear wheel slip and do a little bit of a skid? I certainly know which one is a little bit easier to control. Most of the time, if you have a front wheel slip out, it's game over. Keeping that nice attack position where you've got your chest down and your elbows bent, will also allow you to be a lot more smooth over parts like this. So we've got a drop coming into the corner and we've got some braking bumps down there. So if your elbows are locked out and your arms are stiff, you're gonna get bounced around on this rough stuff. So attack position 
will help your arm, your elbows and your arms will absorb the bumps as well as your forks but you've got a lot more movement in your arms than what you do in your forks so that's why you want to keep your elbows bent it will allow the bars to move in and out away from you and help to soak up some of the bumps so you can be a bit smoother also so I'm taking a left hand corner here so what I want to do is have my left foot forward right foot back so whatever way you're turning have that foot forwards and that will basically allow you to when you lean over see how the the saddle there is passing behind my leg behind my knee there that will be why you notice you can corner better one way than the other because if your left foot forward and you go to take a right hand corner when you lean over the saddle will basically hit on the on your leg so I'll show you what I mean if I'm left foot forward and I go to lean my bike over to the right notice how my saddle is hitting my leg that that will not allow me to lean the bike over as far hence why you probably notice cornering better on one side than the other it's simply just a matter of switching which foot you ride forward with when you come into a corner so keep that in mind whatever way you're turning keep that foot forward and another tip I can give you is don't just have your pedals straight forwards and backwards try to have your back foot down so your pedals are at around a 45 degree angle you don't want to go all the way down like this because then obviously when you lean over the saddles hitting the leg again but if you have them at about a 45 degree angle like this you can still allow that saddle to pass behind your knee but you're also getting your weight a little bit lower which will allow you to get more grip on your tires once again the lower your weight is the more your tires are going to hook up so with berms you've obviously got the support from the angle of the berm which will allow you to lean your whole body over in with the bike but on flat corners if you do that you notice your front wheel will want to slip like that i'll show you once again you lean over too hard on a flat corner your front wheel wants to slip so the solution for this one is when you're doing flat corners try to separate your body from the bike so If I'm doing a flat corner and I'm turning left, I'll have left foot forward, let the saddle pass beneath my knee, but I want to keep my weight above the tires basically. So if you look at a line straight down from where my body is, it will be right on top of the inside knobbies of the tire, which is what's digging into the ground. Once again, you have your weight over that part and it will want to just grip more so another also another good tip when you're taking flat corners is to stick your bum and sort of stick your bum outwards and sort of try to rotate your shoulders like what i'm doing now this will just help to get your weight a little bit further out which will support your tires a bit more and help them grip up not all berms are 100 berm and not all flat corners are 100 flat corner so keep in mind, if you're coming into a berm and it flattens at the end, don't just use a berm technique around the whole corner, otherwise you might find yourself slipping out at the bottom because you've got your weight leaned over too far inside. So if you notice the berm flattens out towards the end, what you want to do is start off with a berm technique and then move your way towards a flat corner technique at the bottom of the corner when the berm starts to flatten out. Some people call this wiping your butt on the berm. Because like I showed you before, you want to stick your bum outwards when you're doing flat corners and get your weight above the bike. So it just looks like you're wiping your butt outwards towards the outside of the berm. And um, this will help you hook up more on that flat little section of the berm. So in regards to braking, you want to get most of your braking done before you enter the corner. Because when you're going through the corner, you really only want the forwards force of your tyres rolling and the sideways force of you leaning into the berm to be acting on your tyre. If you add another force, which is the backwards force of you braking, tyres can struggle to handle all of that and they will lose traction sometimes. So understand sometimes you have to brake during a corner and it's unavoidable. You've got to do what you've got to do. 
but in general you want to try to get most of your braking done before the corner so you can let off the brakes and just let your tires hook up set up the tripod on the side of the trail right next to the berm and try to rip it as hard as i can so you guys can get a good idea of what i'm doing from a third person view and i should be able to slow it down which will be able to help immensely so yeah we'll cut to that footage now If this video has helped you get a better understanding on how to corner faster, then let me know down in the comments. I'd really appreciate the feedback. And um, yeah, if you enjoy watching the videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I post every single week on Friday and that's the best way to keep up to date. Give us a cheeky little like and a comment while you're down there and I would really appreciate it. Cheers and enjoy whatever you're doing for the rest of the day.